The United States of America and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia have had a close relationship for the better part of a century. Despite the noticeable differences in government, the US being a secular constitutional republic and Saudi Arabia being a far-right theocratic monarchy, the two nations bonded over a mutual disdain for socialism and a mutual love of weapons and oil. Saudi Arabia has the oil, and America needs the oil. America has the weapons, and Saudi Arabia needs the weapons. America needs oil for transportation, and Saudi Arabia needs weapons to perform airstrikes in Yemen that kill civilians. In 2017, Saudi Arabia bought $110 billion worth of arms from America with the expectation that they will buy another $350 billion in arms from America over the next 10 years. For reasons like this, as well as their ongoing human rights abuses, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has a terrible reputation all over the world. Not its people, but its rulers. The Saudi royal family. Recently, the royals had an idea. What if, they thought, we could improve our international reputation with some superficial, insignificant reforms, and publicly ally ourselves with a powerful American company? But what company could we find that has absolutely no shame? Picture this, I'm a bag of dicks, put me to your lips, I am sick, I will punch a baby bear in his shit. World Wrestling Entertainment has existed in one form or another since 1952. Vince McMahon, seen here with his tongue in the mouth of one of his wrestlers, has been chairman since 1980. He took a family business and made it an international sensation. Oh, son of a bitch! Through a series of broken promises and steroid scandals, McMahon amassed an empire that is now the leading brand in professional wrestling across the world. Although publicly traded, WWE remains a family business in a key way. Members of his family, including his children and son-in-law, help run WWE to this day. The House of Saud is the ruling family in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. More commonly called the Saudi Royal Family, the head of the House of Saud is King of Saudi Arabia. The King serves as both Head of State and Monarch of the Kingdom. The King holds almost absolute political power, but the King sometimes appoints someone else to be the public face of the Kingdom and to do the legwork. Because I guess being a king with no real accountability gets hard sometimes. Right now, that man is Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Human rights under the Saudi royal family are considered among the worst in the world by almost any metric. Saudi Arabia performs public executions by beheading and can be performed for any number of offenses, many of which would not be considered capital crimes in most of the world. A Saudi citizen can be publicly executed for repeated drug use, heresy or apostasy, adultery, witchcraft, and more. I guess they got a real witch problem over there. Earlier this year, Saudi Arabia carried out a mass execution of 37 prisoners, mostly due to confessions that were made under torture. Women are given status similar to that of children in Saudi Arabia and comprise only 5% of the workforce, the smallest in the world. The public practice of any religion besides Islam is strictly prohibited. Peaceful protests can get you locked up for 15 years, homosexuality is illegal and punishable by either imprisonment or even execution. Doctors are banned from giving hormone replacement to transgender people and honestly the list just goes on and on. Bear in mind that none of this is a condemnation of the Saudi people. They're the victims, not the oppressors, and a lot of them are trying to fight back. The problem is the government, not the people. The deal between WWE and the Saudi royal family is for WWE to do huge shows in Saudi Arabia and help them with propaganda for the family while they're there. Unlike the vast majority of WWE shows, their events in Saudi Arabia are funded by the government, controlled by the Saudi royal family. Normally when WWE wants to tour somewhere, they pay some fees, do some paperwork, make a deal with the arena about profits and who gets what, and then all of a sudden Monday Night Raw is live from Tampa, Florida, or London, England, or wherever WWE wants to hawk its merchandise. In this case, Saudi Arabia handles everything. WWE just needs to show up and wrestle. Now you might be thinking, so what about Saudi Arabia? Why is it strange that WWE is doing shows in Saudi Arabia? They do shows in other countries, even countries with less than stellar reputations all the time. And America is an imperialist nightmare. And all of that's true. But WWE's events everywhere else are not paid for exclusively by the government or paid to be propaganda. 
For example, when WWE tours the UK, their events are not paid for by the Queen, and WWE is under no obligation to endorse the UK government or make a stand on Brexit. They're just there to put on a wrestling show. Frankly, WWE usually has their heels mock the city or country they're in for some cheap heat. The precise terms of the deal are unknown only to those who have signed it and those who have access to it, but since WWE is a publicly traded company, they make quarterly reports on their earnings. Some of the details have been sussed out, while other details remain under lock and key. One thing we do know for sure is that WWE's money from Saudi Arabia is stacked higher than that of WrestleMania. The gate alone for WrestleMania this year was around $16 million. Which sounds like a lot, but that's chump change compared to the Saudi Arabia deal. There have been conflicting reports on just how lucrative this deal is for WWE, but by the most trusted accounts, this will make the company at least $45 million per year on the deal. That may be an estimate because WWE's earnings in Saudi Arabia are listed as other in their financial reports. Let's say this conservative estimate is correct and that WWE stands to make $45 million per year. The deal lasts for 10 years. That means WWE stands to make at least $450 million over the course of their deal with the Saudi royal family. That's nearly half a billion dollars into the WWE coffers. Maybe with that much cheddar they can start giving their wrestlers health insurance. They won't. This is a ridiculous amount of money for two shows per year, especially considering how little is actually grossed for Saudi Arabia. Media outlets have reported that their first show only made the Saudis $250,000 and the second made a similar amount. The Saudi royal family is losing a tremendous amount of money on this contract. There is absolutely no way for them to earn a profit from it, at least not in the short term. For WWE, it's a sweetheart deal. For the Saudi royal family, it seems like a bad investment. Except they aren't trying to make money off WWE directly. They have other plans in mind. When World Wrestling Entertainment tours in Chicago, their presence helps the city's economy, and of course WWE makes a tidy sum from the tickets and any merch that they sell. That's the arrangement. They aren't summoned there on the behest of the mayor of Chicago and paid $45 million flat just to show up there would be no return on that investment. So why is this happening in Saudi Arabia? What do the Saudi royals want from their association with WWE? Saudi Arabia practically gave their tickets away. They had no intention of making money from this. Their objective was not to make money from their alliance with WWE. The deal to have WWE put on shows for them and their people is part of a charm offensive to the West. What? Hear what I say. We are the business today. Fuck shit is finished today. What? In April 2016, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman unveiled his plan for the future, Vision 2030. While the plan was lauded as a modern solution to the monarchy's heavy reliance on oil, it simply does not involve significant social reform. Instead, it has provided the Saudi royal family with a strategic way to distract international attention away from their massive human rights abuses that the country commits to this day. It's almost entirely a financial plan, not a social progress plan. Among the Crown Prince's limited reforms for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is the bold plan of allowing women to drive. Saudi Arabia was the last nation on earth that criminalized women driving. When they decriminalized it, the international media ate it up. What a reformer! Women drivers! How progressive! What's next? Freedom of religion? No. Well, maybe decriminalizing homosexuality? No. That's still on the books as punishable by prison or execution. But still, women can now put their hands on a steering wheel without going to prison. Much progress. So equality. But that didn't matter to the media. The Crown Prince got what he wanted. Positive press for his country and the Saudi royal family. Reputation means a lot. PR means a lot. For example, when the Saudi royals recently had a journalist murdered and dismembered, it caused an international stir resulting in several nations in the European Union to suspend their weapons sales to the kingdom. The Saudi royal family wants the kingdom to have more influence in world politics, and you can either earn a better reputation, or you can buy one. 
The closest thing to a real reform is the crown prince saying he will stamp out corruption in the government. But guess what, Buttercup? You're the government, and you and your family do all the crimes. What the Saudi royal family means when they say they will end corruption is that they will end corruption outside their family. They want all the corruption for themselves. This parallels Donald Trump's claim of draining the swamp and then presiding over an administration that itself is corrupt. How many scandals have there been? Are they daily now? The Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia gives up nothing, gains everything, and everyone calls him a selfless and earnest reformer. Because it makes for an appealing narrative in mass media. The reforms are not bad, Women being able to drive is good, but the reforms won't go much further than that. Saudi Arabia is an ultra-conservative theocracy, and that won't change outside of a revolution. Bottom-of-the-barrel reforms are not indicative of significant reforms anytime soon, if ever, and so far that has been confirmed. Executions have gone up since the Crown Prince's Vision 2030 plan. The interventionist war in Yemen has intensified under the Crown Prince. The war in Yemen is so bloody and such a disaster that even longtime ally, the United States, tried to pull support for it in Congress until the bill was vetoed by the President. Donald Trump loves the Saudi royal family. They are peas in a pod. Saudi Arabia has become more dangerous to its people and to its neighbors. The reforms related to entertainment are superficial. It's a veneer, a thin veil, and nothing more. So, where does WWE come in? World Wrestling Entertainment is the Saudi royal family's proof to the world that they are a modern kingdom. In addition to this alliance looking good for the Saudis, WWE is paid to perform propaganda for the Saudi royal family during their WWE Network specials in Saudi Arabia. That's what the Saudi royal family paid for. They didn't pay for wrestling, they paid for propaganda. WWE understands reclaiming your legacy after a history of misdeeds and scandal. In recent years, WWE has had their own charm offensive, charity work. That has not changed the fact that they mistreat their wrestlers, don't provide health care, prop up murderous regimes, and support a president who literally puts children in cages. But hey, you know what? Shut up! Ignore all that and be a star. Be a star, everyone! WWE has an anti-bullying campaign called Be A Star in spite of the fact that it infamously has created an atmosphere of bullying among its talent. Chief Brand Officer Stephanie McMahon, seen here falling into a pool of mud, has admitted publicly that WWE's charities are there for show, to help the image of the company, and because it's just good business. Frankly, the McMahons and the Saudi royal family are a match made in heaven. Will I die slain like my king by a terrorist? Will my woman be Coretta, take my name and cherish it? When it's said that WWE performs propaganda for the Saudi royal family, this does not mean that WWE simply has wrestling shows in Saudi Arabia. When detractors of this deal say it's propaganda, they mean it's propaganda. During the first show under the deal called Greatest Royal Rumble, announcers, commentators, and wrestlers touted Saudi Arabia as a progressive country thanks to the Crown Prince. Corey Graves talked up the Prince's Vision 2030 plan and said that Saudi Arabia is committed to diversity. That is... a lie? Yeah, it's a lie. It is literally illegal to be anything but a Muslim in Saudi Arabia. It is literally illegal to be anything but a heterosexual in Saudi Arabia. Multiple times during the show, Michael Cole, the voice of WWE, gave shoutouts to the Saudi royal family in attendance. You know, the group that signs off on all the executions and extrajudicial killings? The Saudi royal family can be seen in almost every shot in the broadcast because they occupy the entire front row. And they're not sitting in stadium seating, they've wheeled out these big cushy palace chairs or whatever. They seem barely interested in the show and mostly talk amongst themselves and walk around, obstructing the view of the people behind them. Just milling around, being dicks. Just being mean, salty dicks. 
There was also an entire section of the show dedicated to WWE Hall of Famers like Jerry the King Lawler and Booker T thanking the Saudi royal family and completely ignoring everything they stand for. In addition, there was a video package touting Vision 2030 and the amazing reform of women not being imprisoned anymore for driving a car. Quite literally the last country on the planet that permitted women to drive cars and they want a cookie for it. Right before the rumble portion of the evening, Michael Cole reiterated that Jeddah, the city where the event took place, is so progressive. Uh... Listen, I'm not applying the word progressive under American standards because America is complicit in a lot of this. I'm not applying European standards or Western standards, especially since that term has some racist implications. I'm not applying the word progressive here in any way except to say that the Saudi royal family has made Saudi Arabia one of the most ultra-conservative nations on earth. It is conservative not only by world standards, but also by regional standards. Women are required by law to limit their interaction with men unless they are family. There are separate entrances for women and men in buildings, offices, banks, and universities. Unlawful mixing leads to criminal charges for men and women, but women will always have to face the harsher punishment. Women can't go anywhere without their male guardian's permission or conduct business without a man present. Speaking out about this or about anything that the Saudi royal family does is also illegal and punishable by death. There is no progressive city in Saudi Arabia while the royal family is in power, and claiming that there is because the Saudi royal family paid you to say it is participating in propaganda. During the Greatest Royal Rumble, there were no matches for women. This is prohibited in the country. Even though WWE has made strides in their women's division over the past several years, they were barred from the event. Women fans of WWE were permitted to attend the show, but only with a man as a chaperone. Sami Zayn, who is of Syrian descent, was also barred from attending the show. The Saudi royal family doesn't like Syria, and even though Zayn is actually Canadian and just has Syrian roots, that's still too Syrian for the royal family. During the show, WWE played an advertisement featuring some of their women wrestlers, and the Saudi royal family was furious. According to those who were there, the audience, meaning, you know, the citizens, were apparently fine with this. But again, the government is not the citizenry. The Saudi Arabian General Sports Authority made a statement apologizing for showing indecent women in their wrestling gear and basically threw WWE under the bus. And what did WWE do after being mistreated like that? They said, thank you, sir. May I have another? Run the jewels, jewels. Jamal Khashoggi, a journalist and critic of Saudi Arabia, entered the Saudi Arabian consulate in Istanbul, Turkey, to obtain documents related to his marriage. He never walked out. Over time, it was revealed that Khashoggi had been assassinated, almost certainly under the orders by the Saudi government. Saudi Arabia kept changing its story. First, they denied he had been killed at all. Then he had been killed in a fist fight, then by accident during interrogation until finally the Saudi Arabian Attorney General said it was a premeditated murder, but absolved the royal family of any guilt. Of course. Shortly thereafter, a CIA investigation concluded that Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman ordered the assassination. This put WWE in a public relations nightmare. Should they go ahead with Crown Jewel, their next show in Saudi Arabia? Should they cancel and deal with the fallout of their contract? WWE claimed it would investigate the issue, but that's corporate speak for we're not going to do anything. It's the same thing they said when reports of Randy Orton's sexual misconduct resurfaced. Because if they did investigate and came up with something, they wouldn't have plausible deniability anymore. They didn't want to find anything because it would be easier and better for them not to. Generally speaking, WWE fans were not happy with the company's foray into Saudi Arabia and their blatant propaganda for the regime, but once word about the murder of the journalist began to spread, fans at live events began to audibly boo every reference to Crown Jewel. Even The Undertaker, a fan favorite for decades, was on the receiving end of this reaction when he promoted his match in Saudi Arabia. American politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, condemned Saudi Arabia and some were even concerned about WWE doing the show. 
But with Trump in the Oval Office, it never seemed likely that WWE would be asked to stay home. World Wrestling Entertainment and Donald Trump go back a long time. Trump hosted two WrestleMania events in Trump Plaza. Trump is in the WWE Hall of Fame. The WWE did fundraising for the Trump 2016 campaign. Even Linda McMahon, seen here next to Karate Eric Bischoff, was head of the Trump administration's Small Business Bureau for about two years. There is no way Trump's State Department would tell the McMahon family not to make their blood money. In the end, WWE decided not only to do the show, but to continue to do their twice-yearly shows for the Saudi royal family. Nobody has a copy of the contract between WWE and Saudi Arabia, except for WWE and Saudi Arabia. That means we don't know for sure what the penalty for backing out of a show or a deal would cost them, but probably a lot. They may have even had to go to court over it or settle out of court for a lot of money. Nobody knows exactly how it would shake out, and that was the excuse that a lot of people made for WWE to continue to do this. But here's the thing. I don't care. According to Forbes, Vince McMahon is worth $3 billion. If he lost two-thirds of his worth overnight, he would still be a billionaire. I don't have any sympathy for a billionaire who might lose millions of dollars on a deal or go to court and lose millions more. Vince McMahon will never be broke. He's 73 years old, set for the rest of his life, and he's probably very happy with all of his success. There is no other explanation for why he walks that way. Now, UFC, on the other hand, following the murder of the journalist, severed its ties with Saudi Arabia. Endeavor, the parent company of UFC, returned a $400 million investment to the Saudis. They gave it up. All of it. It's possible to do it, UFC did, and WWE did not. I also don't have any sympathy for Vince McMahon here because he may not have known that the Saudi royal family was going to dismember and murder someone and have it be international news, but he definitely knew who they were before he signed the deal. He knew what they were about and he signed on anyway. The killing of Jamal Khashoggi is nowhere near the first death at the hands of the Saudi royals. It's just among the most high profile in recent years. Numerous American businessmen expressed concern or made a show of outrage over the Saudi royal family's involvement in the murder, but nearly all of them are still doing business with the Saudi government, including WWE. Only two men refused to work the Crown Jewel show. John Cena and Daniel Bryan, because they are very good boys and we're all better off for having them in our lives. It's understandable why others were afraid of requesting the night off, though. WWE is infamously vindictive, and most wrestlers would probably end up losing their spot for staging a protest. Cena and Bryan are bulletproof, and so well respected that punishing them would cause more problems than solve. Chief Operations Officer Paul Triple H Levesque, seen here having sex with a dead body, followed WWE's talking points precisely. He said that the company's presence will make Saudi Arabia a better country, but he is too smart to really believe that. The Saudi royal family is using WWE to increase their influence on the world stage. WWE is not using the Saudis to change Saudi Arabia. They just want their blood money, and it's extremely naive to think otherwise. Another reason WWE can't make Saudi Arabia a progressive or even moderate country is because Saudi Arabia is a hundred times more powerful than WWE. Also, Vince McMahon is not financially incentivized to do this. Under capitalism, businesses are not incentivized to do the right thing. That's the world we currently live in. So anyway, Crown Jewel happened. They brought back Hulk Hogan. Look at him all racist and made of leather. Shane McMahon, seen here getting his penis electrocuted by a monster, was given the World Cup and declared the best wrestler in the world. Their next Saudi Arabia show, called Super Showdown, is being billed as a show that, and this is a quote, will be as good or exceed WrestleMania. That's definitely something the Saudis insisted WWE say. WWE has never before belittled WrestleMania or treated WrestleMania as anything but the biggest show of the year. 
the Saudi royal family has so much power over WWE right now, it's embarrassing. But like I said, they have no shame. WWE just wants to keep the cash rolling, and they will do and say whatever it takes to make that happen. This is a 10-year deal between WWE and the Saudi royal family. We're only about a year in. We have a long way to go before this is over. He's had dinner with many princes and very important people, and he oh. just... <laughs> oh my God, what the heck? Did... What did Titus just... Maith is here to become yeah, a star. And we gotta take another look. That's oh, no. probably yes, the greatest <laughs> moment in Royal Rumble history. Oh my god. Oh my Superhuman god. power. And Titus O'Neil, go back under the ring, Titus. 